For Criminal Media's Policy, I'm Tabi Madiba. Joining me today is the leader of the ANC in the Western Cape, Cameron Dugmore, here to unpack the ANC's campaign for local social compacts on the land issue in the Western Cape. Can you briefly tell us more about the ANC's campaign for local social compacts around land issues in all 30 municipalities in the Western Cape? Yes, we have a situation where in our province there's a a great need for land um, for a number of purposes, um, human settlements, urban agriculture, also socioeconomic development and especially local economic development and also for recreation. But one of the challenges we have is that very few of the municipalities actually have a consolidated and accessible audit of all the land within that municipality that belongs to the municipality, to the provincial government, also to the national government, and then the state-owned enterprises. So as the leader of the opposition for the ANC, I'm in the process of writing to every one of the 30 mayors in the Western Cape, asking for a meeting to discuss the state um, of their land audit. And then the idea is that when we get to the adoption of the municipalities' budgets in July, which is when all the municipalities have to adopt budgets, we want to include the land audit and a plan for the release of that land into the integrated development plan, which has to be adopted before the budget can be passed. And in this way, we believe we'll be able to involve communities, actually establish a social compact between those um, in the community that need land, um, the local municipality also established agriculture, emerging agriculture and business, so that there's a clear sense that this is the land that we have, And this is how we're going to release that land. We're also saying that it's important for the municipalities to look at well-located private land. But we believe that if we have a compact, we're not going to have, um, you know, populist calls to occupy pieces of land or like in the city of Cape Town at the moment where the city wants to auction pieces of land um, which could be used for, for social purposes. So we need to bring everyone together. We need to be guided by the constitution and the need for redress um, because clearly the land policy in our country is focused on three things. The one is security of tenure, which is critical in many Western Cape farming areas. And then also restitution. We need to speed up the remaining restitution. And then critically, something that hasn't happened in our country and our province sufficiently is the issue of land redistribution. And we believe through local compacts to identify and release land, we can give new momentum to the the land reform program. And in what way will entering into social compacts at district and local levels help address challenges of poverty, unemployment, and massive housing backlogs across most municipalities in the province? Well, you may be aware that when it comes to housing, um, the Western Cape has over... Um, 500,000 people on a, on a waiting list. So by releasing more land and giving security of tenure, giving title deed, you're actually increasing the wealth assets um, of the most poor in our province. I think secondly, there's a huge um, opportunity in our province for urban agriculture and also for formal agriculture. And you know, many of these municipalities have historically leased out land to established commercial, mainly white farmers. And we believe if these municipal leases could be directed towards um, black farmers who've um, shown their ability to produce um, food, that that is going to increase um, revenue, it's going to increase income for those particular farmers and obviously in that way reduce the inequality. So we believe that through job creation, um, through agriculture, through giving security of tenure and increasing people's ownership of assets through housing, um, we begin to actually deal uh, with issues of poverty and inequality in our province. And you also outline a couple of quick wins that could assist. Please outline some of them. You may be aware that at the moment, right in the center of town, in Seapoint, what used to be the SABC building called Rocklands, with quite a big open space and a number of smaller flats, that is now under the custodianship of the Housing Development Association, which is a national entity falling under human settlements. So that site, the Rockland site, is ready for social housing. 
Also, we have a provincially owned site also in Seapoint called Tafelberg, which is also standing empty. There was a court case that stopped the DA in the province from actually selling that um, privately. And then, of course, we also have the, um, the former Helen Bowden nursing home, um, which had been occupied some years ago, which is quite close to the waterfront. So these properties are actually available, which in a practical way will help to reverse apartheid spatial planning and build affordable housing closer to the city, which, which cuts transport costs hugely for workers that are coming in from communities like Mitchell Spain and Kai Litcher, um, increases, as I said, the ownership of assets. And these are quick wins which have been identified, uh, which we think um, will assist and also show the value of each municipality having an updated and a transparent land audit. And the ANC is also calling for political party cooperation with the DA and Good Party. Can you tell us more on this? Yeah, I think one of the things that's been concerning us, there's been sort of a public spat between the leader of the Good Party, Patricia Delo, um, who also happens to be the Minister of Public Works and is the custodian of a, a number of national properties in the Western Cape. And then you have the DA Mayor, Jordan Hill Lewis, and they were involved in a number of public spats as you know, Patricia Diddle comes from the DA and there's quite a lot of bad blood. And we feel that this unnecessary conflict is holding back the release of parcels of land, both from the city, because on the one hand, the city says we want national to release, yet we see the city does have its own assets. I mean, why else would they be wanting to auction some of those assets? And at the same time, there are important pieces of land resorting under the National um, Department of Public Works which lie in the Western Cape. So we need to you know, stop that uh, petty politicking, get these social compacts together in the city of Cape Town and others, and then look at what city land, what provincial land, what national land that, that we have. And we don't believe that um, the ongoing spat between the mayor and the national leader of Good, who's the Minister of Public Works, is actually advancing the resolution and the release of land which our people need. As you stated earlier on that your plan also identifies private land for use for agriculture, urban food security and other activities. Can you elaborate more on this? Yes, well, you know, in many municipalities, you would have a situation where there is well-located uh, private land, um, which is, for instance, close to existing affordable housing developments. Like I'll use the example of in Philippi, a huge township in the Western Cape. You've also got pockets of private land. So, you know, we are saying that there needs to be an engagement with those private landowners because you have a situation where some of that land is already um, occupied by informal settlements. Now, not even, you know, going to the issue of um, expropriation at this particular point in time, but by negotiating with those landowners, coming to an agreement about the city or the province or the Human uh, Housing Development Association gaining access to that land, taking that land off as a burden to the private developer, um, coming to an agreement in regard to price, and then developing that land. Obviously, when we have the, amend when we have the new expropriation act, that will determine you know, whether we're talking market value or just an equitable trans compensation. But for now, there are well-located pieces of private land across the province which could be used for public housing, urban agriculture, and for more formal agriculture. So we are saying we should not exclude that land because in our province, we have a particular challenge where 70% of all urban land in the Western Cape is actually owned by South Africans who were historically qualified as white. That's 70% of urban land, which is um, owned by individuals, is owned by white South Africans and only 30% of the urban land, whereas in the rural areas, um, in the farms, only 3% of privately owned agricultural land um, belongs to African colored or Indian farmers. So these are issues which definitely mean that in the social compact that we're talking about, we are going to have to include a serious engagement around uh, private land as well. And Cameron, can you tell us what is the land question about to the people, both black and white? Well, I think, you know, in, in, in terms of people who, because of their race, because of the fact that apartheid um, had racial classification, that led 
not only through apartheid, but through um, colonialism, the dispossession of land on a massive scale. And that has actually contributed to the impoverishment of many black people in our province. And by black, I mean African, colored, and Indian. And I think in the white community, the reality is that security of tenure, um, acquiring ownership through the various colonial administrations, the Dutch colonial administration allocated land to, to, to white farmers, the British um, as well. So you've had essentially a, a privilege. And I think what's important when we come to a social compact here is that wh white land owners need to accept that we are going to have to come to agreements where there is redistribution of land, um, where there is security of tenure. Because if we fail to deal with these things, we're not going to have overall security um, and um, peace in, a, in our province while those demands and historic injustices exist. So I think the white community have a very important role to play as well in coming forward um, and assisting with the resolution of the land issue. And I think in terms of the black community as government, we have a duty to show that there is movement, that land is being released, that there is security of tenure. And I think if we can do that by means of a social compact, um, we will begin to address the land question in a way which is sustainable and actually brings lasting solutions. That was Cameron Doug Moore speaking to Prima Media's Polity about ANC's campaign for local social compacts on land issues in the Western Cape.